When it comes to political parties, there are a number of factors you have to sort of consider because there isn't just the parliamentary party. That's all your MPs. Then you've got the members of your party. And those ultimately really are the two main key opponents. But then how does that party win an election? Because after all, your membership is depending on how many members you have. And in this case, the Conservative Party, we don't know. <laughs> like, we don't know. And bear in mind, we can go over two pieces today. A guy called Chris Hopkins, who's a guy from Savanta, who's a pollster, who says that the Conservative Party membership is like 170,000. We'll see. And then, interestingly, we get on to Daniel Hanan, who said the Conservative Party membership is actually 90,000. Which, if it's 90,000 or 170,000, <laughs> you know, it, it's kind of difficult to say who is telling the truth here. Um, because these membership numbers, especially by the Conservatives, kept very, very secretive, very, very hush hush. Uh, and yet, as we discussed not that too long ago, we're wondering why the Conservatives are such in dire straits. However, it is really important to know that sometimes left unaccounted for is the people outside of the party. Because you have a lot of people who might be um, Labour supporters, Conservative supporters, Lib Dem, etc. But they don't join the party. But that's the party they will vote for. I guarantee you, we all know people who have been like that, who have done that, but have never joined or been a part of that political political party for probably various numbers of reasons but but with the ongoing current political craziness especially in the conservative party there seems to be a bit of panic going on about the fact that um they are about to potentially elect honest Bob Jerick, who has a lot of baggage with him, or they're about to elect Kimmy Badnock, also very, very troubling as well. And it is really these two. You know, I, I keep on pointing out to the to the poll that we covered a couple of weeks ago now, but Kimmy Badnock in the final two, she beats everyone. Um, the only person who beats everyone apart from Kimmy Badnock is Robert Jerick. And yet, they are about to potentially elect him. Maybe even Kimmy Badnock, which would again also be very bad for them. But there is now a sense from a lot of people that you see of, of sort of this, this third stripe of you know, party member who isn't really a member of, like, the Conservative Party, or maybe they were uh, maybe a, a, a former MP or, or something like that, or had something to do with the party, seems to me, seems to me a lot of people are suddenly desperately, desperately trying to cover for the fact that the candidates that they are about to select are going to be absolutely horrible because once you get your party it then has to go to the wider electorate and we just commented recently about the green party you know they've had uh, a huge fight and battle over their the course of their conference about they don't want to dilute their party. They don't want to, uh, you know, appeal to the centrists. Well, I said this, I don't know how many countless times, you look at people's voting intentions, who they consider themselves to be, right-wing, centrist, or, or left-wing. The biggest people block in that constantly, and that is the only one that has grown is centrist. So even if, even if we move 
to like a PR system, guess who the biggest block of voters to appeal to will be? <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, this is what a lot of people are suddenly worried about, that you have potentially about to elect this leader who only appeals only appeals to your core voter base, a very diminishing core voter base versus rest of the party. So <laughs> we're going to get into this. But first of all, uh, I want to show you this because uh, I think this is, is well worth um, having a look at. So this is Savanta, and this is something that came out on top of here. And this is surveying people who they said, who would you make a better PM? And versus, you know, their conservative counterpart. Each and every single conservative runner loses to Keir Starmer. James Cleverly. 23% versus Starmer's 47. Tom Tugendhat, 22%. Starmer's 47. Robert Jarrett, who they are about to potentially elect. He's on 20. Starmer's on 48. Kimmy Badnock, she's on 20. Starmer's on 49%. Mel Stride, 16. Starmer on 48. So when you look at that, when you look at that, you can see that is not good news, considering that every single person, candidate you are potentially running is not being perceived that they are going to be a better prime minister than Keir Starmer. And this should be ringing alarm bells. Now, of course, what happens when these alarm bells start ringing? Well, this is when you get, of course, people like Daniel Hanan, who who like who write these puff pieces about various people. Now, Daniel Hanan, uh, at the end of this article, he says, "Oh, um, you know, I don't really like this this contest." And, and he is, to be fair, let's give him credit. He has written a num numerous articles about what he thinks of. Um, you know, the Conservative Party leadership contest, he thinks it's badly designed, he thinks this should be different. Okay, fair enough. But he has openly said he will not back any candidate until they get to the final two, because he thinks members should have more of a say. Okay, fair enough. But it'll be interesting to see who he comes out and backs when we do get to that final two. And don't worry, we will have a look at his, uh, at whoever he ends up backing. But we're just going to quickly go over this, because I think it's well worth having a look at what he's got to say about the two top front runners. So this is what he has to say on this. Um, so, uh, and then there were four, each of them more capable of leading our party. Robert Jarrick has fought a brilliant campaign, speaks fluently, and seems to have put the most thought into what needs to happen next. That's his thought of Robert Jarek. Jarek's entire campaign is, we need to look at what happened. We need to sort of resort re ourselves out. And then we can go forward and, and, and start thinking of these new ideas. Well, what happens to, to poor Mr. Jarek when his own conservative MPs start to disagree with him on the path and decision that he's taking? As we have been seeing since 2016, just constant infighting and things like that. No one has any proper answers about how to solve that infighting. So even if they do elect, you know, generic Jerick, remember, that's his nickname by his own MPs. <laughs> so, wow, really inspires confidence that, you know, this guy's going to, you know, enthuse the party and and give them some direction and purpose right and then of course this is what hanan has to say about kimmy badnock 
Kim Van Nock has now an irresistible backstory. Her exaltations of wokery are a joy to hear, all the more so because leftists don't know how to respond when their critics are not white men. That is absolutely false. There are plenty of people that have responded to Kimi Badnock and what she's had to say about wokery, etc. Um, but here's the thing. The British public aren't interested in that. They don't care. They literally do not care. This attempt to import the culture wars, as we've constantly says, have, have just failed time after time after time after time to try and make this a like big voting thing as we saw in America. But even in America, we've seen that the culture war actually has a sell-by date. Because even though at one point culture war stuff used to be like a big Republican vote winner, not anymore. Not anymore. It's dropped off now. Because people are realizing, oh, actually, um, all these things that Republicans are, are telling us to worry about, actually, we don't we don't find that the that we should worry about them as, as much. So it's dropped off dramatically. So even if they did import the culture wars, it has a sell by date. But even then, they've constantly tried and failed to import these things, and it hasn't worked. And now there is, I think, a serious panic in in sort of the third part of the, the Conservative Party, whether they are choosing to sort of sit it out, not be part of the party, or at least waiting until, you know, the adults are back in charge, potentially, again, of the Conservative Party. Um, yeah, we'll see. And I've said before, you need, you know, a sensible Conservative Party. It's like why you need a sensible Republican Party. Because otherwise, it makes things very, very difficult to to get done, even if you are a party. And this is why then you end up having to have uh, big, or at least try to win big majorities and win, you know, big on this. Otherwise, if you don't have a sensible, you know, conservative party, they might say, well, actually, we like that idea. Maybe we're willing to compromise. Maybe if you do this or, or something like this in, in the bill. You know, that's a party you can sort of work with. You might not necessarily 100% like having to, but if you want to pass that bill, if you've got a small majority, then you have to sort of, you know, negotiate with them, make the changes necessary to get stuff passed. Not that much, of course, an issue at the moment for Starmer because he's got such a big majority, but we don't know what might happen by the time we get to 2029, what that is. And it's honestly far, far too far away to really think about what the next makeup of the next parliament is potentially going to look like at that time. So until then, we won't know. But yeah, um, make no mistake, I think there is a lot of people arguing about it. In fact, <laughs> another thing worth showing you, another thing worth showing you is, um, I've actually only realized this, but Daniel Hanan has actually started responding to people in conservative home comments. And someone had a very interesting comment on this. <laughs> um, where is here? We are. This is this is it. So this is interesting. So they quote him first, saying Robert Jerick has fought a brilliant campaign, speaks fluently, seem to have the most thought out, uh, and what needs to happen next. And they respond with, "Let's completely brush aside his now." instant nastiness towards vulnerable children and using his position as housing minister to get his pornographic mate off a flat tax bill which uh and with just hours to spare because you know he speaks fluently <laughs> and bear in mind these are the skeletons in 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 his closet if if he wins it is just instant fodder not only that, but I'll tell you what, if Jerick wins, the first thing I'd do with Starmer, I'd make sure that that comes to the front of the queue and start embarrassing him now in select committees. Start asking him these awkward questions like, why did you do this? What was this happen? What conversations did you have? You know, 
start asking these awkward questions in a in a in a select committee. Uh, all of a sudden, I think the um, the Conservative MPs might suddenly then want a different MP because all you have to do next election is once again remind people, hey, look at all the corruption that Jarek was involved with. Do you really want to elect someone potentially worse than Boris Johnson when it comes to corruption? Because trust me, even when we get five years down the line to 2029, people still aren't, aren't going to be forgotten of how the Tories acted during their time in power. Uh, people have, I think, a lot longer memories than people give them credit for, especially when it comes to politics. Uh, the Tories are going to find it, I think, very, very hard to seriously make a comeback at all. But anyway, on to this. Uh, so let me just finish this off. So after all, this is now a morality-free space where you can just all ignore the corruption if it's your guy doing it. Uh, how how has this how this party has now plummeted while pompous-sounding folks pretend otherwise? Jarek would not even be an also ran for conservative in previous times. They're right. There was a time where if if Jarek would not have even got close, he would not even be in the running. It would be laughed at and it just goes to show you how far they've gone but daniel hanan then responds with this as i have posted elsewhere in a reply to a different comment he said i have reached the reluctant conclusion that after 30 years in politics uh that a rump of voters maybe i should say a slump can't move beyond the idea that people who disagree with them are morally flawed selfish greedy etc nasty there is, alas, no reasoning with such people. And yet, Daniel Hanan is just hand-waving away all that. Just, oh, because there's, there's no reasoning with this, this slump. Because he's potentially about to win. This, this leadership contest. And of course, Daniel and Anne doesn't want to be on the outs with Jarek. He wants to make sure that if he can at least get it, he's got the ear of, of the, the current leader of the party. If he, if he needs to, if he needs to bend that ear a bit, he can do. It is incredibly worrying that the party has gone to such a stage that stays that it is in the Conservative Party in the way that it has. Because that commentary is right. There would be a time where Jerick would be laughed at if he put his name in. No one would even go near him. And yet, he's the current front leader. I'll tell you what, if I were Tom Tugendhat, if I were James Cleverley, if I were Kimmy Badnock, I would all of a sudden start bringing up all of um, his past mistakes, all that stuff. Because I'll tell you what, it's worth pointing out that to the wider electorate, all that stuff gonna go down like a like a lead balloon. I wouldn't be surprised if we maybe start seeing that. But we'll see what happens. But as always, thank you very much for watching. And of course, as always, like I say, down below the Patreon page, the Buy Me Coffee link where you can buy me coffee, the YouTube thank you button. And of course, as always, there's the Pony Club down below as well. And of course, I'll see you all next time.